And so what I realized is before I could introduce anybody to my principles about teamwork and leadership and vulnerability and organizational health, I needed to know that they were doing it for the right reasons. And in fact, there are two reasons, two motives why a person wants to become a leader. And I think about this every time I go to a graduation ceremony and somebody says, go out and be a leader, make a difference. Our motive has to be pure. And the two motives are one, I'm doing it because I'm reward-centered. And when you tell an 18-year-old or a 22-year-old to go be a leader and make a difference, many of them are saying, that would be really cool because being a leader must be great because it comes with a lot of attention and some money and some control over my life and influence on others. And that is a very understandable and natural and dangerous reason to be a leader. And we're all susceptible to this because we've all fallen into this. The other motive for being a leader is that you want to serve. It's responsibility-centered. This is a burden. And when somebody makes you a leader, you get promoted to a position of management or you start a company, it is first and foremost a burden because you are now responsible for stewarding that role for the good of these people, your employees, your customers, partners, everybody else. So the right motive for being a leader is responsibility. It's kind of heavy and it's really important. Now with God's help and pure intentions, that can be a wonderful thing. But if you're doing it for your own personal economics, and I don't just mean financial economics, but what it does for you, you're gonna get really frustrated. Because I'll tell you what, leadership is never economically sound. <laughs> you are gonna give far more than you receive, which makes sense if you're a follower of Jesus because that's why we're here is to love others. Now we all receive things, but if we think that the economics are gonna play in our favor, that's not gonna make sense. And that's why it's so important that the world has faith-driven entrepreneurs who are willing to give far more than they receive, knowing that their rewards are eternal and even that there are rewards here. Now, in this day and age, in this modern time in the, in the church and in the world, being motivated in the right way is so important because to be a faith-driven leader, you are going to suffer. It is, it is not a theoretical statement to say that we suffer if we're followers of Jesus. And if people know that we're followers of Jesus, there's a lot who might abandon us. And we have to love them through that, even as they turn away from us. And even as we get hurt by that, we can know that our motive is to love on them and to love on the people that stay with us and to love on the customers that belong with us and even on the ones that leave us. We can, we can do that if our motives are pure. Mm -hmm.